Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 7th of May. India records 1.5 million new COVID-19 cases in a week. Pentagon chief says removal of all contractors from Afghanistan underway. And former Maldives president treated for wounds after blast outside home. And now for all the details. India on Friday reported a record daily rise in coronavirus cases with over 414,180 infections, bringing total new cases for the week to 1.57 million. India's surge has coincided with a dramatic drop in vaccinations due to supply and delivery problems, while international aid has continued to pour in. India reported another record daily rise in coronavirus cases on Friday, bringing total new cases for the week to 1.57 million as the country's vaccination rate falls dramatically due to a lack of supplies and transport problems. The country reported a record daily 414,188 new cases on Friday, taking the cases tally to 21.49 million, while deaths from COVID-19 swelled by 3,915, bringing total deaths to 234,083. India's health care system is crumbling under the weight of COVID-19 patients, with hospitals running out of beds and medical oxygen. However, aid from different countries across the globe has continued to pour in recent days to help India alleviate the crisis. Authorities in Savdajang Hospital, one of the major hospitals in capital New Delhi, thanked countries for sending medical aid to India after receiving equipment and medicines on Friday. I wish to extend my gratitude for all the help coming from different countries all over the world in respect of providing ventilators, oxygen cylinders, BiPAP machines, oxygen concentrators, pulse oximeters, PPE kits, N95 masks and drugs, antiviral drugs and other drugs from all over the world with their great generosity and that too in a short span of time. Meanwhile, people have been flocking to get inoculated in parts of the country while stocks of vaccines are running out. India is the world's biggest vaccine maker. However, it is struggling to produce enough doses. Its two current vaccine producers will take two months or more to boost monthly output to more than 110 million doses from 70 million to 80 million. In news from Pakistan. Pakistan could run dry by 2025 as its water shortage is reaching an alarming level. Residents in Pakistan's port city of Karachi are deprived of their share of clean drinking water supplied by the Water Authority to the megapolis. The situation has been exacerbated in recent years as rivers in the country are losing large amounts of its flow because of climate change and dam constructions. Every fortnight, a man comes to this dusty area in Pakistan's commercial city of Karachi and bangs a stone on an electric pole, signalling the start of water distribution by a charity. It's a welcome sound for the residents who come streaming out of their homes in Orangi town, the largest plant shanty town in western Karachi with blue canisters to collect the water. The city, which has an unofficial population figure of 20 million, receives water from its two water lifelines, the Indus River and the Hub Dam. At least 15% of the water available in the official supply system is lost before it reaches the tap due to dilapidated infrastructure and rampant water theft, according to rough estimates by officials. 
ये जो पानी आप देख रहे हैं ये वो पानी है जो टैंकरों से हम खरीदते हैं या ये वेलफेयर वालों के पानी उठा के हम भर के अपने पास लाते हैं ये वो पानी स्टोर करके हम अपने लिए इस्तेमाल करें द सिचुएशन हैज बिन एग्जासबेटेड इन रिसेंट ईयर्स एज रिवर्स इन द कंट्री आर लूजिंग लार्ज अमाउंट ऑफ इट्स फ्लो बिकॉज ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड डैम कंस्ट्रक्शन फिफ्टी परसेंट पानी है और फिफ्टी परसेंट पानी नहीं है तो उस सूरत के अंदर आपको पानी की शॉर्टेज हर जगह पे नजर आएगी अच्छा फिर इसके अंदर बहुत से ऐसे इलाके हैं कि जहाँ पे बहुत ज़्यादा शॉर्टेज आपको नजर आएगी जैसे कि डिस्ट्रिक्ट वेस्ट है डिस्ट्रिक्ट वेस्ट में आपको बहुत ज़्यादा पानी की शॉर्टेज नजर आएगी क्योंकि इस वक्त जो जितनी पॉपुलेशन का इजाफा हो रहा है वो डिस्ट्रिक्ट वेस्ट में ज़्यादा हो रहा है Karachi has been pinning its hope on a major water supply project K4 which was taken over by the federal government in 2020 after 18 years of delays and design faults under the provincial government but local media reported in January that the completion of the first phase of the fourth additional water supply project supposedly to happen in 2018 has been delayed until 2023 Moving on to news from Afghanistan. US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Thursday that President Joe Biden's order to withdraw all US forces from Afghanistan by September 11 also extended to US funded contractors. He informed the process is underway along with the troop withdrawal. US Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Thursday the process of removing all contractors from Afghanistan working with the United States was underway as part of President Joe Biden's withdrawal of forces from the country. The remarks during a joint press conference are the clearest indication yet that Biden's April order to withdraw all US forces from Afghanistan by September 11 extended to US funded contractors. The departure of thousands of contractors especially those serving the Afghan security forces has raised concerns among US officials about the ability of the Afghan government and military to sustain critical functions. Yeah so we're going to responsibly uh, retrograde uh, all of our capabilities that, that we are responsible for and the contractors fall in that in that uh, in that realm as well. So I mean as as you know contractors uh have the ability to to renegotiate contracts if if they so so choose going forward in the future Austin said the drawdown was going according to plan so far but Afghan security forces are locked in daily combat with the Taliban which has waged war to overthrow the foreign backed government since it was ousted from power in Kabul in 2001 More on news from Afghanistan A former Afghan news anchor Nimrat Ravan was shot dead by gunmen in southern Kandahar city on Thursday as violence mounted across the country amid a US troop withdrawal. No group immediately claimed responsibility for the attack but this happened a day after the Taliban issued a threat to Afghan media outlets and accused them of siding with Afghanistan's intelligence agency. A former news anchor Nimrat Ravan who worked at Tolo News, Afghanistan's largest private television station, was shot dead by gunmen in southern Kandahar city on Thursday as violence mounted across the country amid a US troop withdrawal. No group immediately claimed responsibility but government officials and western powers usually blame Taliban insurgents for such attacks which they deny. Many similar killings have taken place in recent months often targeting journalists civil society activists government officials and judges later in the day Taliban spokesperson Jabibullah Mujahideen denied the militant group was behind the shooting of Ravan in Kandahar but in tweets on Wednesday Mujahid had warned against propaganda and one-sided broadcast by some media outlets The United States diplomat Ross Wilson expressing shock over Ravan's murder has called for an immediate stop to the attacks on the press. In news from Nepal, Nepal is being overwhelmed by a COVID-19 surge as it is recording 57 times as many cases as a month ago. The new wave has seen a shortage of hospital beds and medical supplies across the Himalayan nation. Nepal is being overwhelmed by a COVID-19 surge as India's outbreak spreads across South Asia. 
the International Federation of Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies has said. Nepal is now recording 57 times as many cases as a month ago, with 44% of tests now coming back positive, the statement said. The new wave of coronavirus infections which has spilled across the Indian border into Nepal has seen a shortage of hospital beds and medical supplies across the Himalayan nation. <laughs> Nepalese towns near the Indian border could not cope with the growing number of people needing treatment, while only 1% of the country's population was fully vaccinated. The Nepal government on April 29 enforced a 15-day lockdown, hoping to curb the infections. In a statement issued on April 30, the country's health ministry said the situation has become unmanageable. Moving on to news from Maldives. Maldives' first democratically elected president and current parliament speaker, Mohamed Nasheed, has been injured in a blast late Thursday near his home and was being treated in a hospital in the capital, police said. President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, a close ally of Nasheed, said an investigation into the explosion was underway. The Speaker of Parliament in Maldives, former President Mohamed Nasheed, was being treated for shrapnel wounds and is in stable condition after a blast outside his family home on Thursday, a spokesman for his governing Maldivian Democratic Party said. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack. President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli, a close ally of Nasheed, said an investigation into the explosion was underway. Nasheed, who is currently Speaker of Parliament, was getting into his car when the blast occurred. Local media reports suggested that a homemade explosive device was planted on the motorcycle parked near his car. He was rushed to hospital for his treatment of his wounds. The government is seeking technical support from foreign partners in the case and a team from the Australian Federal Police is expected to join the investigation on Saturday, President Soli said in a statement. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar expressed concerns over the attack and wished Nasheed a speedy recovery. Nasheed, who became Maldives' first democratically elected president in 2008, has remained an influential figure since leaving office in 2012. As India is struggling with the second wave of coronavirus cases, volunteers in western Ahmedabad city have turned a Hindu temple into a COVID-19 care center to help deal with the surge in infections that have overwhelmed the healthcare system. The 50-bed facility would be housed in the prayer hall of the temple and would have 30 beds equipped with oxygen supply and another 20 normal beds. Hindu volunteers in Western India has turned the temple into COVID-19 care centre to help deal with the surging number of coronavirus cases that have overwhelmed the healthcare system. The 50-bed facility in the western city of Ahmedabad would be housed in the prayer hall of the temple and would have 30 beds equipped with oxygen supply and another 20 normal beds. Six doctors, an adequate number of nurses and the paramedics will be on the site to care for the patients. Meanwhile, auto rickshaws have also become the latest symbols of hope in the national capital New Delhi doubling up as ambulances to help its collapsing healthcare system. With ambulance fleets unable to keep up with the surging cases, the Delhi government, with the help of a non-profit organization, has mobilized more than a dozen auto rickshaws equipped with hand sanitizers and face masks, while oxygen cylinders are provided on as-needed basis. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.